Araragi and Senjugahara, Kayomi and Hitagi, Demon and Crab. They are not a perfect couple, not a match made in heaven. They are an imperfect match, an imperfect couple. However, they are the perfect imperfect couple. And today, I'd like to discuss why. If you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing, and ringing the bell, as I cannot explain to you how much such a small action can do for this channel. Also, if you want to support me further, my book, Gang Fluid Justice, is available on Amazon.com. Why not check it out? Anyway, on with the video. The relationship between Araki and Senju Kahara may well be my favourite relationship in fiction, and it's because it isn't some big romance. There was no long build up, no back and forth. By episode 5, they were a couple. They barely knew each other, but due to that, they now have the rest of their lives to get to know each other. Senju Kahara fell in love with Araki because he helped her, helped her to save herself. And that isn't to say her feelings of love and forgiveness were mixed up. She did love Aragi, and it was because he helped her, or more accurately, because he helps people. As Sandra Gohara says herself, even if he saved someone else, she still would have fallen for him, as she fell not for her saviour, but for a saviour, for someone who helps others no matter what, someone who helps even people that maliciously attack him. She says it herself, she loves him for many reasons, because he is cute, he is kind, and because he will come to her rescue when she is in trouble, like a prince. And why does Aragi love her in tow? Simply because she is herself. He loves every part of her. And as he tells Kanbaru, no one can replace anyone else. He loves her and no one else, as only Senju Kahara is Senju Kahara Hitagi. She loves him because he is himself, because he is a saviour. And he loves her because she is herself, because she is Senju Kahara Hitagi. Senju Kahara lived a depressing and sad life. Her family split apart, her body was almost sexually assaulted while her mother watched, and did nothing. It is truly deplorable that a young girl was allowed to grow up under such circumstances, but even so, she did. She shut herself off from everyone else. She didn't trust anyone and pushed them away. Even Kanbaru, the person who loves her second to Aragi and in Baki Monogatari arguably loved her even more so, was pushed away. However, Aragi didn't let that stop him, and he went after the girl who had lost her weight, as that is just the kind of man he is. No one had gone so far for her before, so she was moved. Even if she didn't show it, I'm sure she was moved by Aragi's gesture. Not only did she listen to him, she also is a man who wore religious iconography and wore a priest outfit, who upon their introduction is called a pervert because Araki told her to. The stress Senjigahara must have felt upon meeting Oshino must have been immense. After all, the person who assaulted her and tried to take her virginity by force was a man who was part of a cult, a man who many would label a pervert, a person associated with religion, priests and religious iconography. However, Senjigahara trusted in Araki and as a result, she was able to save herself. The end of Hitagi Crab, where Senju Kahara asks if she and Aragi can be friends, is touching to no end, and is one of the many reasons Hitagi Crab is my favourite arc in the entire series. As in this scene, we see light shine on Senju Kahara, and we see her smile. Her problem hasn't been dealt with, the hardship is only just beginning. However, for the first time in forever, she is happy as she now has a friend, she met Aragi. As a big gesture isn't always needed, you don't fall in love with someone for the big things, you fall in love because of the small things. In this case, the small gesture of being a friend. Her first friend after being isolated for years. Senju Kahara loves Araki for his nature, however that is also something that could end in her despair. As Araki will gladly die for someone, he will die to save someone. In Kizu Monogatari, Araki was happy to die and save Kishot, Accelerai and Heart on the Blader, as he had no friends, no one would mourn his death. However, that is no longer true. He now has friends and a lover who would mourn him. And that's why, at least in my opinion, that Senju Kahara says she will kill anyone who kills Aragi, as she doesn't want him to die, and he doesn't want anyone to die. So if he is to die, for someone else, they will die as a result. As a result, he cannot die. I believe her declaration to kill his murderer is just a Sundari way of saying that she doesn't want him to die, she wants him to live. However, Aragi being as oblivious as always doesn't understand this till the very end, till he saved himself and realised the worth of himself and of the people that would mourn him. But Senju Kahara loves that part of him. She loves that he is a saviour. So in a way, maybe the reason she phrases it this way and doesn't just ask him to not die isn't because she is a Sundre, it's because she values his saviour nature and knows in some situations he may well just have to die to save someone. In a way, they are both self-sacrificial though. Aragi may throw himself in harm's way to save people, even at the cost of his own life, but Senju Kahara self-sacrifices in a different way. As she says, 
Her life until meeting Aragi wasn't a happy one, it was one of sadness and despair. However, she was thankful for all those horrible experiences as they led her to meeting him. Which is a sentiment mirrored by Aragi in Zoko or Ari Managotari, as who is the character he never meets in that reverse world? It's Njigahara, because he has no regrets about anything to do with her. He wouldn't change anything about meeting her or falling in love with her. As said by many characters throughout the series, Hanakawa seems like the more logical choice to be Aragi's partner. They have a history together, they have seen each other through tough times, but despite that, Aragi gets together with Senjukuhara after only just meeting her. As they aren't destined to meet, they met by chance. If Aragi hadn't caught her, they wouldn't have ever spoke. It was just a chance encounter, but that's what is so precious about it. It is something that only came about by chance, by one small event, so it easily couldn't have come to be. But it did, and that is what is so special about it. And although I do keep saying they aren't perfect for one another, they are pretty close to it. She isn't the only one for him, but she is the only one he loves. He isn't the only one for her, but he is the one who saved her. It's all a chance encounter, but the fact the encounter happened to start with is what makes it so magical. A small interaction, but one I think is worth mentioning, is Aragi and Senjukahara's white day date in Orari Monogatari. Throughout this date, Senjukahara keeps suggesting punishment games, and well, she keeps losing them. But why does she do this? Because she is a sundere and she can't bring herself to ask directly. And what was it that she wanted to ask Aragi? She wanted him to call her by her name, to call her Hitagi. She couldn't give him much, she could chew to him, give him her beloved underclassman and grouchy dad. She could even give him her body and of course the stars above her treasure. And all she wanted in return was for him to say her name and stay by her side. As Senja Gohara may be acid-tongued and insult Aragi a lot, that is because she still is a teenage girl trying to express her love for the boy she loves. She just wants him to love her, that is all she needs. And a relationship where all each party needs is each other's love is something that doesn't need to be explained. It's something to witness and enjoy, which kind of begs the question, why am I making an analysis video on it? The next section will have spoilers for the off-season light novels, specifically Masubi Monogatari, so if you are anime only, please skip to this time here. Masubi Monogatari's final part, Suzuri Human, focuses on the future of Aragi and Senjo Kahara. He is working in Japan and she is working abroad. They need to make it work somehow as they love each other and want to be together. In the end, Aragi decides to work abroad and Senjo Kahara decides to work in Japan. They think the same thing but as a result, mess it all up, as they are a perfect, imperfect couple. As Senjo Kahara says back in Back in Monogatari, the thing that scares her most is the thought that she will ever hate him and that she will ever lose him. And well, what happens in Masumi Monogatari? She is crying, crying tear after tear due to the thought that she may lose him, they may break up for good. All that time, her fear stayed the same, her biggest fear that she would lose and grow to hate the person she loves more than the world. The person who she would murder everyone on earth to avenge. The person who in order to save, she asks Kaiki for help. The person she hates and blames for the downfall of her entire family. She loves him so much that the thought of not being with him brings her to tears as losing him would mean losing everything to her. However, he will never give up on her and she will never give up on him, leading to the before mentioned turn of events. We never get a resolution to what happens next. Well, technically, if you consider Mazin Monogatari canon, and Aragi does continue to work overseas, but that is neither here nor there. Who works where is never said, but it doesn't really matter, as they will work it out. Not perfectly, but imperfectly, as an imperfect couple. And because they are a perfect couple that thinks the same things, but are imperfect as they get it just off, we get a repeat of their conversation from the end of Maori Snail, however, it's a bit off. It's the opposite of last time. Aragi says I rab you in broken English, and Senju Kahara says Kayomi Tor, which doesn't translate too well into English, but is an indication that he will ask her to marry him soon. It is the perfect ending for this amazing couple, and it is the perfect chronological ending for Monogatari as a whole, as remember where the series started, with the meeting between a boy and a girl. Personally, I cannot relate too much to Araki and Senju Kahara's relationship, and I think that's okay. You don't need to relate to everything in fiction to understand and enjoy it. Even if I don't relate to their relationship, I can still enjoy it and be touched by it. My favourite episode in all of Monogatari is episode 12 of Back in Monogatari, Subasa Cat, part 2. It is nothing more than a simple first date between two characters, no oddities, no fights, no mysteries. It is just a date. That said, it is one of the most moving episodes of anything I've ever seen. And when the credits rolled and I realised the lyrics of Kimino Shirane Monogatari, the story you don't know, echoed the words Senjuhara had said to Aragi when the date started, I teared up. No, I full on cried. How could I have been so stupid to have not realised, I thought. How could such an amazing directional choice have been made, I thought. How could an ending be so emotional, I thought. 
How do I love this series so much, I thought. As what do I love about Monogatari? Everything, there's nothing about it I don't love. And since I love everything about it, then well I must love the relationship between a demon and a crab as well. This perfect, imperfect relationship. Comment of the week was really hard to pick as last week's video on Nobunobu had some really great comments, but in the end I had to pick Vashnavi Akula, so thanks for the amazing comment. If you have any opinions on Aragi and Senju Kahara or Monogotra as a whole, then tell me in the comment section below. And if you have a suggestion for a future video, then again the comment section is funny enough down below. Also don't forget to check out my Twitter at SabTheSin for channel updates and just jam my chatter, and my DMs are always open if you want to chat to me directly. Also don't forget to check out my Twitter at SethTheSin for channel updates and just general chatter and my DMs are always open if you want to chat to me directly. Or check out my Instagram at SethTheSin underscore cosplay to see my cosplays are random anime merchandise. Also as said before, my book Gang Fluid Justice is available on Amazon.com so why not check it out. So with all that said and done, I've been SethTheSin, the deadly sin of geek and I'm signing out. Stay safe everyone.